and we're live good afternoon everyone welcome to bigfoot odyssey this is sunday encounters i'm your host carrie danielle is actually the host i just kind of fill in but uh you know i can't help but just talk so <clears throat> here i am with me as always the lovely miss daniella how are you dear i'm good thank you well i think we have a pretty good show lined up for you guys kevin uh saunders we told his story or i told his story actually several several times i i got it on the shutter and then I, we brought it out here on one of the uh one of the sunday shows and told it and it just it's uh it's a really i would epic word i don't know it's just it's just a really weird strange thing but uh i think it's going to be even better just to hear you tell it kevin so welcome here man ah thank you thanks for having me no, Appreciate absolutely. That. absolutely. Before we get started, just remind everyone to keep it clean and chat for us. We appreciate it. There are kids watching. Um, actually got to meet one of our younger fans, Miss Dixie Dobbins. She's nine years old. She was at the conference in Gatlinburg, and we gave her T-shirts and hats and wristbands, and she was uh, she watches every show. So you guys just keep that in mind. All right. And she can read, so I'm sure she's reading all the comments. And of course, got to see Jason again. It's good to see him again after the first time we went out and had our 168 debacle. <clears throat> he wasn't able to make the second one. But uh, so, what's been going on? Anybody, Daniela, while I've been gone, you've been having fun without me, or what? Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> no, we've missed. You. Everybody's missed you. Um, we've had some good encounters on, encounter people on, and yeah. it's really, you know, it's been good to get these people on and share the stories, and uh, there's been a lot of support from the chat, obviously, because they're great, you know, the community we've got here, um, yeah. they're really in this place what it is. Well, what I say to everyone watching this right now, you know, I don't like to say smash the like button or hit the like button or punch the like button but what i will ask you to do is very gently just go over and snap its neck just disembowel or whatever <laughs> hit the like button and you know we have a comment section so after let us know what you think leave a comment it just helps the show it helps us if you guys want to help us out hit the like button hit the dislike button if you don't like it hit that um but i think we're going to start giving some stuff away money I think we're going to do maybe $150, $200 giveaways to everyone that does comment that is subscribed. We can tell if you're subscribed and we can tell if you comment, obviously. We can't tell if you hit the thumbs up. Obviously, we'll just rely on your integrity. For that. So I think we're going to start doing that next Friday. Uh, the Friday Late Show will be the first one we do that on. And we're going to have the news on the Friday show also. The Bigfoot news will be coming from myself and Brad. I've employed Miss Frankie Brown, my wonderful assistant she's going to gather the news for the week and we'll put it out there so we'll see how we'll see how it goes but for now we have an encounter to get into kevin why don't you just kind of give us a just maybe a summary of everything before and just walks into what happens as much detail as you want to give all right well i started bow hunting in 83 uh right after high school uh with a friend of mine and we hunted around the tampa area for a year or so, um, tried down south, uh, Green Swamp, you know, the local areas around here. And uh, we're having much luck. So we decided the next year in 84 to go for a week up in the Panhandle. So we went up to Apalachicola. Uh, it's the biggest national forest in, in Florida. And uh, my buddy says, where do you want to go? I said, right in the middle of it. So we had the hunt map spread out there, and he says, where do you want it? I said, I put my finger right in the middle of it. I said, right there. Whatever campground is right where my finger is, let's go there and try that, right? So that's what we did. So uh, first week of bow season, we took off, uh, packed up after work, and it's a five-and-a-half-hour drive up there. So by the time we got there, it was midnight. And as soon as we pulled into the campground, there's deer in the campground just grazing. So we're like, oh, we're in the right place. 
this is great, you know. So that first year, uh, uh, 84, that was, we were 19, you know, and bulletproof, you know, as usual, you know how mm -hmm. that is. And uh, we are uh, we didn't really have any unusual encounters other than this weird owl noise, the hoot owl. And the hoot owl was fake. You could tell it was, you know, really an owl. Uh, and after the owl call, there was this weird whistle slash hum combination, which I would know it today if I heard it. And we heard it every year after that until 1987. And I'll tell you, I'll get into that a little bit further, but it was the weirdest whistle after the, the owl calls that I'd ever heard. And it was, I, I just, it could, it was so strange. It was a weird hum, uh, whistle. Like, Carl, uh, Carl, Carl and Rachel Gotro get that hum whistle, very eerie sounding whistle. I don't know if you've ever yeah. heard that, heard there, uh, what that, what they've gotten, uh, LA Swamp but, Ape. Yeah. It was actually a tune that this, that I, I didn't know then what it was. Of course, I was completely oblivious to Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it. I had no idea anything was out there. The only thing I saw was the clip of Patty on In Search sure. Of, you know, so I had no clue. So anyway, uh, that was the first year in 84 and 85, 86, 87, where it got progressively more active, I would say. Um I don't know the exact order of everything, but we saw uh, everything from, we heard wood knocks. Uh, we didn't know what that was. We actually walked down the hunt camp road and tried to check into that, couldn't find anything. Um, and I, I guess to back up a little bit, we had the game warden come out. This was a little unusual too. Um, all the years that I'd been hunting, I'd never had the game warden do what this guy did. I mean, he came out and he searched top to bottom. He searched our vehicle. He searched a tent. Matter of fact, he was in the tent so long I thought he was taking a nap. I mean, this guy was in there forever. And he, he was looking for guns because in Florida, you can't have any kind of uh, firearm when you're bow hunting. You know, I don't know what it's like anywhere else, but yeah, you're not supposed to. Yeah, I mean, you might be able to get away with like a 22 pistol or something like that for snakes. Yeah. It's kind, of, kind of depends this, on your game warden in the area that you're in. Yeah. Really, this guy was not <laughs> playing. He wasn't playing. <laughs> he was he was uh, looking for something. You know, I, I and I guess it was because we weren't locals. Because he stood there and he talked to us for like an hour which I've never seen before. And he checked in on us every year. He checked us and he was like, look at looking around, poking around, you know, every year. Matter of fact, he was the only one we saw most, most years. He was the only one we saw the whole time we were there to say bow hunting was not popular out there was an understatement. I mean, there was nobody. Right. <laughs> and this place is like 600,000 acres. It's huge. It's a big area. Yeah. And uh, we took a lot of time driving that entire national forest and uh, checking it out. But we ended up deciding to hunt right in our hunt camp. Well, actually on the perimeter of it because nobody was there. And uh, the deer were just everywhere there in that hunt camp. I don't know why, but we had, we had great hunting through the years there. And um, lots of action. So we decided just to hunt right there, which is, I know it's weird, but nobody else was there. So who cares, you know? <laughs> and it was a great open area. You know, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't beat it. It was, you know, they, they uh, took the bush, bush hog to it every year. So, you know, it wasn't like it was jungle in there. And it was nice and clear. You could see everything. So, um, my first sighting, I'd say, was in 88. 
but we had some other things before that. We saw some lights in the woods. What kind of lights? Now it started out like a blue, bluish white. How light big? In, in a tree. Small, it was large. it was lighting up a top of a tree, oak tree. Okay. Or actually a pine, uh, pine tree. Like a ball of light, Sas No, uh, no. We thought it was a hunter that uh, was either treed, had a tr something treed, or it was lost, or or something. Anyway. So we're sitting there watching it because there's nothing else to do. It was probably an hour after sunset. So it was dark. And we're sitting there around a campfire and we look around and we, and we see this light in a tree. So we're like trying to figure out what that was. So we're watching it. And then as we're watching it, it changes color and shape. And, he, and it goes from blue, bluish white to to an orange and then to a red How and when away? it got to red it was probably about 150 yards away okay so we're, we're talking basketball size softball size i mean it was about beach ball size okay so big and eventually you know, it actually formed in front of our eyes it started out as a light and then it kind of formed into a shape it was the weirdest thing, and it actually changed shapes a little bit, and then just kind of hovered right above the tree and up and down a little bit. And I guess it—I don't know how long it lasted because we sat there just mesmerized by this thing. And any, uh, any opinion on what you think it might have been? FWC is going to tell you. Uh -oh, uh -oh. We getting feedback. feedback. Uh -huh. Not me. Not me. Kevin, is that you? I don't Hold think on, so. Let me, let me see. Test one, two. Yeah, it's on your end, Kevin. You got your YouTube app open? Yeah, maybe. We can just hear it coming through your speakers. Is that better? Test one, two. Nope, still here now. Sorry about this, guys. I was trying to just come on. Weird. Yeah, this that, started. Is that better? Test, test. Yep. Is that better? Don't yes. Right, so anyway, sorry. anyway, I, I, was, uh, I was just going to say that FWC will tell you that it's swamp gas. You know, that's, yeah, no. that's their go-to <laughs> for that. But what do you think? Yeah. What do you think it is? I I think it was something related to them because, really? yeah, I think that that's where I saw the light. I think that's where they lived. To be honest with you, I think eventually, I figured it out. That's where they lived. Now, now that's within the last few years because I actually repressed a lot of these memories um, because it was just so bizarre. And my buddy was real superstitious. And so he didn't talk about any of this stuff. And uh, him and I just kind of explained everything away, like the wood knocks and that light and the lights that we saw just kind of explained it away. And actually we didn't even talk about the lights that much because he wasn't that kind of guy. I mean, you wouldn't talk UFOs or anything paranormal with this guy. He just wouldn't do it. I mean, he's just not that kind of guy. He was meat and potatoes, hunt, hunting guy. Nice guy. I mean, I, I thought it was nice. Uh, we haven't spoken in 22 years, though. We had a falling out. But uh, we were friends for almost 20 years. But... Um, yeah, he was very superstitious, and uh, he did not want to talk about anything like, you know, what we're talking about. So I had nobody to uh, bounce ideas off of, so I just repressed everything. Most people do. You know. Anyway, uh, in 80, so eight. 80, that was probably 84, 85, and then we heard the wood knocks. Um, they heard the hoot all every year until 87, and I'll tell you the story on that. In 87, I, had, I convinced two of my other buddies to come up with us and uh, you know try their hand at bow hunting. And so they did, and we had a, we had a great time. But the first morning, like always, the, the hoot owl starts. And my buddy, uh, he was, 
you know, had spent a lot of time in the country too. One of my other friends and, uh, him and I are, are talking when it happened. So we're looking at each other. And so when it happens, he goes, that wasn't an owl. He says to me, he says, what the heck was that? I said, well, you know, we, we think it's local kids somehow following us up here and, uh, messing with us, even though we couldn't see anything. And I, that was our excuse. You know, we had to make excuses for everything. That's what we did. Anyway, <laughs> my buddy screams out, all right, now cut out the, the phony owl noises. And after that, we never heard it again. So I really think this thing knew what we were saying. Because I think it was their greeting to us every year. Hey, we know you're here. You know, now that I know more about it, they were actually letting us know that they were there, I think. Of course, we didn't know that. <laughs> At the time, we were completely oblivious. But, until, the, uh, until the day you saw it, and you both actually saw one, right? Yeah, that was our last year there in 95. We hunted there from 84 to 89. 88 and 89 were my really strange um, hammock encounters. And then 94, we had the deer herding incident that I recently wrote you about. Mm -hmm. And then in 95, everything kind of came together and fell apart all at once. <laughs> I guess I'd put it that way. It was uh, 95 was a weird, was kind of the, fi the finale of everything well, if, he if want, i don't think my friend ever hunted again if you want you can talk about what you both saw and if you want to get into the hammock stuff you know i i had told that story too uh on the shutter but for, to hear you talk about it here um i, I think everybody would want to hear it. i think it's important that people hear this now which, which totally, one you totally up to you <laughs> Well, you know, it, you almost have to start from the beginning because it actually comes into play in 95. And I almost hate to go into it because it's just so crazy. I, look, I get it, man. And if you don't want to talk about no, it, I, I understand I think, perfectly. I but think it, people should know about it. It happened. Um, you know. But it's just so bizarre. People are going to think it's just crazy. No, you might be surprised. Look, we've heard some bizarre stuff. You know, you know, bizarre stuff is going on. Yeah, uh, but and we can't this... explain things. And I know. You know, you can only tell us what you've experienced. I mean, I know. I I listen to encounters every day. Um, that's heard the Mark Martin thing. episode. Mark Martin episode. No, Mark, I don't know if Mark I know Martin that episode that we did with him. It's uh. Doesn't get much weirder than that. I've probably saw it because I've seen every, every one of yours. I'm just not recognizing the the name. He was very very upset. Yeah, swearing a lot. Yeah. Oh, Mark Barton. Not Barton. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's a big I, I thought you said Martin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mark Barton. Yeah, he's actually a friend of mine now. Yeah. I uh, reached out to him, and uh, well, it's not much different, uh, is it? Well, uh, yeah, mine was more of a friendly encounter, mm -hmm. I would say, which is weird. Well, if you want to keep it linear uh, as far as time goes and, and just yeah. talk talk about that, or if you want to go counter, yeah. totally up to you, man, how you want to do it. Yeah, I think I should because it kind of comes back in 95. Um, so and I'll, I'll get right to that one then because that's bizarre. So in 89, uh, my buddy brought – his hammock as usual for the last few years. So I'd say 87 through 89, he took his hammock with us and we put it out in the front of the, the hunt camp. It was probably in about 20 yards from the road in the middle of a, a patch of pine trees. And, he, and we just tied it up between two pine trees. And um, for some reason he liked to, you know, we, a lot of times we explored, in the afternoon and drove around and sometimes we would just take it easy because that was our vacation. So one afternoon when we're taking it easy, he's, he decides to sleep in the tent or relax, 
usually we took a you know a couple hour nap and then we did our evening hunt so anyway uh i took the hammock i'm sitting in the hammock and i i'm looking up at the sky and i'm just uh really enjoying nature and uh enjoying myself and uh thanking god for my good fortune you know just sitting there anyway i fall asleep and i don't even know how long i I was asleep for but i do remember waking up abruptly and sitting up really fast which is unusual for me i'm one of these guys that likes to stretch you know when i wake up i clear my eyes i rub my eyes i do (laughs) take forever to get up usually you know one of those guys but uh this time i i i liked sat up straight in the hammock instantly and right in front of me about three feet right right at the end of the hammock there's this being standing there looking at me and it makes this oh kind of noise like oh shit he caught me i'm sorry about the cuss word anyway (laughs) anyway oh, oh he caught me and drops down and scrambles behind the tree to where I couldn't see it scramble away. And what did it look like? It looked, uh, with what I know now, it looked like a male Sasquatch, a young one, because it was only five and a half foot tall. Cause you know, I was thinking about how tall it had to be because with me sitting up in the hammock and where we had the hammock tied off, I'd say we had the hammock about two and a half feet off the ground, three feet. And I'm like three feet probably sitting up. So it's probably about five and a half feet because we were eye to eye. I mean, it was just right there at the end of the hammock looking at me. Wow. Um, And it it got a real wide eyed look like, oh, you know, he caught me kind of look and made a slight noise and scrambled off faster than you could. I mean, it was like cartoon fast i think i told you before it was like yeah we, uh, we hear that all the time it was just it was it was uh bizarre the speed was just bizarre so anyway that was one day all right so another day or two later i'm sitting there in the hammock again and i wake up abruptly for some reason and i don't know why you know because i'm looking around and i don't see anything so i'm looking around i'm looking around and i see something in the bushes about 25 yards from me kind of rummaging around and then i hear don't be afraid don't be afraid in a girl's voice okay so i said okay you know and as i'm looking over there i see this being walk towards me you know saying don't be afraid don't be afraid i said okay i'm not afraid you know, it was a female voice and it sounded like a girl, a young girl. Anyway, she walks within 10 feet of me and stands there and looks at me. And we looked at each other for at least a few minutes. I don't know exactly how long, but enough for me to get some really good detail that I could probably give Larry and have him draw for me. Uh, just, it was a it was a female Sasquatch standing 10 feet from me looking at me. We were eye to eye. And um, you heard this, you heard this in your head, right? Now at at this point, I didn't see her close enough to watch her mouth. But then after, after she, we looked at each other for a few minutes, she started talking and she says, hi, how are you? Or, You know, we started talking back and forth. We introduced ourselves. And I noticed her mouth wasn't working, wasn't, you know, moving. I'm like, that's bizarre. But she's bizarre. So this whole thing's bizarre. So, uh, you know, and I seemed really relaxed, more relaxed than I normally am. And for some reason, I just had this feeling of just, I don't know, just, uh, 
just a relaxed feeling. I wasn't calm, uh, scared. Yeah, I was very, very calm. You think and she it was did unusual. that to you? I think so. I think so. Now that I look back at it, I think they have the ability to make you scared, I think, in my opinion, or to, to calm you down. I think it, they can do that. Hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's some natural, you know, instinct they have or ability they have. I don't know. But anyway, she wasn't, her mouth wasn't moving. But we, we stood there and talked for like a, another minute. She, she gave me her name. I can't remember what it was, but I told her my name. What sort and of it, accent did she have? I mean, how, how was it coming across? It came across as plain English, but and maybe it's something I I had it. Maybe it's something I have in my head, but it sounded like an air of almost like a princess kind of air to her. She had a very straight posture, talked very confidently, very clearly, in in perfect English, no accent that I could tell but just perfect English, okay? So after we introduced her, ourselves, she scrambles behind a, a palmetto bush and sits down. And as she's doing that, she says, I'm sorry, but I feel more comfortable being hidden. And, and, and I said, that's, oh, okay, that's fine. And at that point, I could just see her le part of her legs and her feet sticking out of the palmetto bush. But we continued a conversation that went on at least five minutes, maybe more. Five to ten minutes, I would say. And it was a very cordial back and forth conversation. I, I don't know what else to, to say about it. It was very back and forth. She, would, she asked me what we were doing out there. Uh, I told her, you know, that we were on a vacation and trying to relax and and all that, and that we were just having fun and uh, hunting and, but mostly just relaxing, you know, and trying to take it easy. And then she expressed her opinion that she thought my friend was a bad man, and she said it several times to me, and I had to found myself defending him, uh, uh, you know, to her, saying, no, he's not a bad man. Uh, I didn't ask her why she thought that. Now that, you know, if, uh, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I, yeah. I definitely would have asked a bunch of questions if I knew uh, then what I know now, of course. Did he have a, a, uh, gun, a gun visible or something like that, maybe, that you didn't have? Do you think she was picking up something... No, like no, that. no, no, no. We were we were pretty tight. There, I knew everything he had. He knew everything I had. I mean, we packed in the same vehicle. You know, we mm -hmm. were sleeping in the same tent. So anyway, uh, she just kept saying that I think your friend's a, a bad man, and she says she's not. He's not like you. You're a good man. She said to me, and so I had to. Try to, I was trying to convince her that, no, he's okay. For some reason, I felt like I had to, I don't know, defend him for some reason. So anyway, this went on for, for quite a while, and then all of a sudden, she gets up and starts walking fast away from me. And I said, wait, wait, where are you going? You know, we're not done talking. And she says, oh, I enjoyed our conversation. Maybe someday we can talk again is what she said as she was leaving really fast. So I sat there in the hammock and I'm like, did that really just happen? And uh, I know you had it to sounds, wonder. You had to wonder if you were dreaming yeah, or, or something. Yeah. I know it sounds corny and cliche, but I actually slapped myself. I know it sounds crazy. Well, but I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't know did. what else. I didn't know what else to do. You know, I'm sitting there in a daze going, I don't know how you stayed after seeing the first one. Much well, less go to much less go to sleep. You think they well, did something to you then? I I think they did. I think they they made me calm. Not only that, but it was a friendly conversation. You gotta you gotta remember that too. If it was something 
like, I want you out of here. You need to get out of here kind of conversation. I went with that back to my buddy and said, Hey, we need to pack and get the heck out of here. Yeah. I, actually, I hear you. You know, I actually went back to him, you know, after sitting in the hammock for another 10, 15 minutes, you know, trying to get a hold of myself. I mean, I was freaked out, you know, and, uh, and I didn't even know what to say to him other than I came up with a plan before I got back to camp to tell him it was a dream that I had just so I could talk to him about it a little bit because I, there's no way I could actually tell him what I what just happened. I mean, he's not the kind of guy that would even discuss anything like that, you know. So anyway, I told him it was a dream and I told him that I met a girl out there and that she was saying that he thought she thought you were a bad man and I had to defend you, man. I defended you, you know, and he says, he, I do remember now he said to me, I thought I heard something out there, you know, cause he was sleeping in the tent, probably 60 yards away. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that he, they either had a lookout telling her, Hey, he's waking up. Or she could sense that he was waking up. Because when I got back to camp, he was getting ready for the, the evening hunt. He was getting his bow ready. He was getting his arrows in the quiver. You know, getting his, his boots on. You know, getting ready to hunt. Hmm. When I got back. So that, that was the first encounter. Uh, the next day... I, I did the same thing, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I was actually wanting to talk to her again. I know that sounds weird too, but I'm like, I have more questions for her, you know? <laughs> I imagine, yeah, so, you're going to be so curious. and Yeah, I'm like curious. Process it a little bit. You, so you know. I, I take the hammock as usual. Like he, he didn't want anything to do with it. Maybe he had his own encounters on that thing and didn't like it. I got thinking about that later is maybe, you know, it, it, whatever he had experience he had wasn't good. You know, he might even cussed at him or something. I don't know what he, you know, or threw something. I don't know what, why they thought he was a bad man. Anyway, getting back to the next day, I again woke up abruptly in the hammock. And I immediately, I hear the girl that talked to me the day before saying hello to me, using my name too, saying, hello, Kevin, it's me again. Don't be afraid. She says, I told my parents about you and they want to meet you. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So anyway, she says, yeah, my dad is make it sure the coast is clear and that, you know, there's nothing around. So he'll be out later, but here's my mom. And as her mom comes out of this thick patch of woods, it comes up and, and gets up and stands next to her daughter to her right. Uh, so to me, it would be on the left as I'm facing them. And they're only like, ah, uh, maybe 40 feet away from me. I mean, close, really, really close in this, the clearing of the uh, hunt camp. They're standing right there. And uh, I'm immediately freaked out by the, the mother. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. What was it that freaked you out? Well, first of all, she was twice the size of the daughter and the daughter, I got a good gauge of her. The day before when I met her, she was six feet tall. Right. She was every, every bit as tall as I am. So when the, when the uh, mother came out and stood next to her and was two times taller, that instantly freaked me out. Wow. And then the mother was actually uh, pretty freaky looking. I mean, I don't know what else to say. And I could describe her. I mean, it was... Uh, that was another another reason why I wanted to come on here is because nobody's described anything like I've seen. 
And um, I think I have reasoning for the way this this female looked. Mm-hmm. Um, well, part of it, anyway. So, no. anyway, she's like 12 feet tall. All right. And she's like straight postured. Well, no figure. But she has a small, small breast. And then her belly kind of went down and drooped. To where it covered the top of her legs. And she had these huge tr- tree trunk looking legs. Huge. Absolutely. I mean, they had to be 10, 12 inches in diameter. Just huge. Um, so, anyway, going back to her face, that was one of the things I wanted to, to talk about. Her face. Her head was huge. I'm, I'm talking like bigger than a basketball. Big, big. Her, her head was huge. And she did apparently have some kind of neck because it wasn't, you know, it was on top of her shoulders. It wasn't below her shoulders like you see a lot of these pictures mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. of males or, you know, the muscular ones that they show. So that made her even taller, I think. You know, that's why she was 12 feet tall, because her head was actually on her shoulders. And uh, she was completely tan color. All the way, all the way, the hair, everything. Face, skin color, everything was tan, uniform. Her eyes were what part of what really freaked me out. Her eyes were like... Uh, like a shark eye or like a doll mm. black. almost almost not real looking completely black completely black round with no visible eyelashes right. if you've ever seen uh let's see i got it written down uh you ever seen uh okay what's his name Todd standing Todd Standing's video four mm. of that tan Sasquatch yep. he took photos of. The eyes were like that. If you've seen that, you've seen the eyes that were on this female that I'm looking at. Okay. She had kind of a normal nose and then a really wide, flat mouth uh, with no no visible real lips, just kind of a slit across the face. The other thing that was freaky is I was trying to figure out what were hanging at her side. Um, At first, I thought they were tentacles. But then I figured out they were arms. But they were so narrow, kind of reminded me of olive oil on the old Popeye cartoon. Mm -hmm. That's what it reminded me of. And I, and I think I have an explanation for that. She's the queen. She doesn't have to hunt. So, therefore, she has no muscle mass. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And I, I think that kind of makes sense, is that all the young ones and the males, I think, are doing the uh, hunting and all the physical labor of the family, if you want to call it that. So, she really had no muscle mass. So, she had just these long, you know, tentacle-looking arms. Gangly looking, <clears throat> gangly but looking. She had big legs, though, right? From huge, her... huge legs. Of course, well, she had all that weight. Well, she had all that that weight to carry. Mister Lighthouse, thank you for that. By the way, busting the wallet out tonight. Uh, did she have facial expressions? He wants to know. No, Was she expressive, no, no, straight face. Well, well, that in '95, that it comes, comes, comes around again. Okay. In '95, okay, I see her again. In 95. So this was, what, six years later, I see her again. So back back to this exchange. She's standing there. This is this is what you're seeing. Does she does she speak to you? Yeah. Yeah. She starts talking and it's a it's a female voice. But her mouth, again, isn't moving. But I'm hearing a female voice. OK, then clear as bell English. You know, I mean, the English was perfect. Uh, she she wanted to congratulate me for being a good man and that they really wanted to meet me because it was rare to meet a good man. 
and um, her daughter agreed with her after she she went on actually a, a minute or so about me being a good man and how I should be proud of being a good man. And then her daughter chimed in and says, I agree, you should be proud, right? And then the daughter says again, right after that, she says, oh, my dad's coming. So he's coming right now. Oh. So he comes out of the thick woods and he must have been crawling because I didn't see him coming, you know, and he was huge. Okay. But I will say he was two feet shorter than the mother. Oh, right. But if he had a head on his shoulders, he, you know, he probably would have been her height, but his head, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how that works, but his head was, you know, like even with his shoulders and you could just see like a dome on top. You know that that uh, little slightly pointed head on top, but he was completely covered in hair, brown hair, dark brown hair, and he had arms down to his knees. He had these huge legs. He had a barrel chest, barrel chest. There was no, or I would say, very little narrowing to the hip, like you see in some of these younger ones. I, I think they're younger ones. So you could tell he was the, the, the papa of the group. You know, he had the dad figure going on, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing that didn't have hair, and this is what stood out to me, was his nose. His nose was a tan color, so it was lighter than his the rest of his body. So he kind of it, it kind of reminded me of a big teddy bear. Right. So I was, I was, I was much more... Go ahead, I was going to say, you see people with, with this condition, it's called hypotrichosis, and they've got hair all over their body, you know, but these are human beings with a condition. This is this is like a genetic switch, and you see, they call them wolf people. Uh, is, is this, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. These these kind of people, this is similar to what this thing looks like? Guy, yeah. God's yeah. child, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like, except for his nose was no hairless. So it it, it was kind of strange looking, but actually I had no problem looking at him because I, I kind of related him to a big teddy bear. And then, Again, again, they have to be doing something to you because the average person yeah. is going to freak. freak out, no, pass no. out, soil themselves. This is oh, not... No. Something I that I think people are emotionally prepared to see yeah. and look at. So they to, they had to be doing something to you. And and look, the notion that they can you know sense who's good and bad. Dogs do that. Dogs. No, I know. So I mean, I agree. Intuition is a real thing. I agree. But for they they knew what I was saying when I was talking to them though. Mm. So I'm not saying they can speak English, but they can definitely. Relate. They can, they, yeah. yeah, they can definitely sp speak, mind speak in English. Hey, how easy would it be for you to stay away from someone if you could read their thoughts? Yeah, exactly. So anyway, getting back to him, he was, he had the huge, huge arms. I mean, I could, I could point to a, probably a dozen pictures that people have put out there that look just like that male. The male was kind of your typical. Now, I didn't know that at the time. You know, of course, I didn't know what it was I was looking at, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. you know. But anyway, he started talking, and then it was a male voice. And again, his mouth wasn't wasn't moving. But uh, he, he was congratulating me, too, on being a good man. And then he went into how rare it is to find a good man. And it was, it's just felt like they were sincerely, like almost in shock to find a man that was a good man. I don't know. It, it felt, it, it actually felt strange to me to take compliments. So I'm not that kind of person. Well, the they're, they're pumping you up. But right, real, real quick, those yeah. who just came in. This is in Florida at Ocala, 
National Forest? Uh, it was Apalachicola, actually. Apalachicola, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, in the Panhandle. Some people were asking. Oh, okay. What was, his, um, what was his eyes like? Very deep set. You couldn't see his eyes. He had the heavy uh, uh, brow line. Very, very hairy. Very hairy. Just really bushy face. I know it sounds weird, but could you tell they were the parents of this female? You know why I could tell? You know how, you know, I've had a lot of time, obviously, to, to think about this. This was back in the 80s. So I've had a lot of time to think about it now that I, you know, all those memories came back, you know, after I repressed them for a while. But yeah, you could tell when you look at the daughter and you look at the mother and the father, you could definitely tell that they are the parents of this daughter. The, the daughter had the straight figure. She had the hair color of the father, but she had the belly and the head shape of the mother. Right. Okay, but her, the, the, the daughter's eyes were huge. I mean, three times, at least three times bigger than, than any human. Okay. And no whites, just a light brown color with no whites around the edges. And she had this weird, almost like a porcupine hair on her face, which I've never heard described anywhere else either. Her, on her face, every so often, she had like spine looking hair that went straight out. At the base, started out her skin color, which was like a normal person's skin color, like a beige, you know, skin color. But at the tip of each hair was dark brown. So it changed color from start to finish. Hmm. And it gave her a really almost like manicured looking appearance. Uh, very, very strange. Very strange. But her head was huge too, like the mother's. And her figure with the belly, the way the belly drooped down to cover the, the legs. And then she had really long hair on her head that went all the way to the ground. Wow. And uh, dragged, that actually dragged the ground as she walked. It made her look like she was, from the front, she, it looked like she was floating from the front. You could barely see the the leg movement. Because between the belly drooping down and the long hair dragging, you know, gave gave kind of a impression that she was floating. Real quick, I right. see a lot of questions. We're going to take questions later, a little bit later on. Uh, it looks like we're going to be going past an hour or so. Yeah, we're, we're not leaving this until it's done. So we'll get your we'll get to your questions uh, in a little bit. So save those for us, please. Okay. Well, anyway, after. Uh, both parents spoke. Uh, I actually didn't know what to do because they were so complimentary of me that I actually was embarrassed. So I decided real quick, and uh, you know, and again, this isn't like me to come up with this idea this this fast. As I came up with the idea of complimenting them on their daughter. It's the only thing I could think of to do after they just said the things they did to me. So I, I just wanted, I said, I congratulate you on, on raising a, a very polite daughter. We had a great conversation yesterday. She's very, very polite, very nice. Uh, I just kind of went on a little bit about how uh, I appreciated the way you know, that we, we had a conversation and, uh, and then as soon as I was finished, they said their goodbyes to me and, and left very slowly, just kind of turned around and walked right into the woods and faded, just like, like faded into the woods. You know, that, that, you know, at that point I was again, sitting there trying to make sure I was awake and slapping myself again, you know, and sitting there and just, did that just happen? 
you know, and how am I going to explain this? So I decided not to say anything to anybody, you know, about that. So I held it in for, you know, until I, I, I basically told myself this couldn't have happened over and over again until I forgot about it is what happened. I didn't know what else to do with that, that encounter. It's either that or go crazy. Yeah. We had to feel pretty good. I mean, for the most part, people, uh, you know, integrity is lacking, you know, integrity being, you know, doing the right thing, whether anybody's watching or not. Um, well, yeah, a lot of people exactly. in the United States that do not know how to self govern. Uh, and, and it's sad. I mean, the proof I always give of this is go to Walmart look in the parking lot and you'll see about five or six shopping carts just right out in the middle of the lot. You know, what's the right thing to do to put it up, but there's no consequences for not putting it up. So that's what I'm, this is what I mean. People that these are just, that's just a lack of integrity. Don't care about well, other people. You're right. You're right. And again, if, if it were a uh, bad conversation, I would have been out of there. I mean, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind if they had a, if it was a threatening conversation, I would have told my buddy, hey, we need to get out of here. Let's go. Oh. But it wasn't. So I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, I didn't know where to compartmentalize that conversation. It just didn't fit anything that I knew. Oh. And, Kevin, uh, there's no telling. There's no telling how many people this has happened to. Right. I'm telling and nobody, you. And nobody's talking about it. You've just got, you're just, you've got the courage to come tell it. Well, and that's why I wanted to do this is because number one, nobody's talking about the 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 descriptions that I've seen on these, especially these female uh, beings that I saw were yeah, just that ain't what I saw. No, I know, I know, and I and I saw males that were were more uh, a mix. I saw at least five different entities or beings whatever you want to call them out there in my years there, I saw at least five, uh, is possibly more, six. Are you classing them all as Bigfoot? Or, you, or do you think this is just a mix of well, uh, creatures? Like what I said, uh, the description of the females were so odd that I've never heard, actually I've never heard anybody describe what I saw. Oh. Uh, so Maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, I think they were because the, the males were definitely what everybody else is describing. But the females were just, and I think maybe it's rare that people see females. Cause yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe people just don't see them. You know? Yeah. True oh, that. That's interesting. You know? And yeah. maybe that's, maybe that's it. Is people just don't see the females that often. I don't know. But I could tell you that that mother, I the mother, I had a hard time looking at her. I really did. And I was trying mm. not to be scared because I think they could sense that. Mm. You know, and I didn't want to start any problems either. You know, <laughs> definitely. Did you have any dreams about them? Uh, I well, that comes in in '95. The final, final. Uh, straw that broke the camel's back. Okay. Yeah, that was in 95. Now, what I'd like to get into if we have time is the deer herding incident. Now, that was another freaky thing. Yeah, go for it, man. We're here. We're All we're right. not going anywhere. Danielle, you got All another right. show after this? I've got a show at quarter past, so uh, but we're okay. We've got another 20 minutes. Well, I can stay. Yeah, I can stay till last minute, last five minutes. All right. All yeah, right, I don't well, want. I don't want to leave this. Yeah, I don't really want to, but I've already <laughs> scheduled the show. No, you have a show, but I don't. So, <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, in '94, well, let me backtrack a little bit. So '90 or '89 was our last year there for a while. Uh, my buddy's brother talked us into hunting in Texas for a few years. So we hunted in Texas a few years, and then uh, then we went back to Apalachicola in '94. So as usual, we packed up. We got out of out of Tampa area in uh, about six o'clock. So we're taking our last last dirt road turn towards the campground at about eleven thirty. 
that night. And the, there was a front coming through. It was a cold front coming down. So there were a mix of rain and, you know, and cold weather on the way up. Okay. So as soon as we turned on that, that last dirt road, we had this herd of deer jump out in front of our car on my truck. Okay. And, uh, I mean, no big deal. I mean, that's not unusual to see deer, you know, but it was unusual the way they ran with the vehicle. Like they didn't care we were there. Okay. And the other weird thing is where they jumped out of a, was a thick patch of woods on the driver's side. At the other side of the road on the passenger side was a clear, was a clearing, you know, just palmetto bushes, short yeah. ones. Yeah. Like they could have easily went straight across the road, but instead they decided to run and we're talking 45 miles an hour down this dirt road with us going oh. in our, in our direction, running upright or on all four. No, I'm talking about deer. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Deer. I'm sorry. sorry. Did I not say that? I got lost. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the, yeah, deer, was... the deer are running along the road. Yeah. No, yeah. Do that, so. yeah. Yeah. So there's about 10 or 15 of them running along with us. So anyway, I, you know, they're not, they're not veering off. They're not going, they're not slowing down. So I told my buddy, I said, the only way I know of to get away from this herd of deer is just to kind of punch it and get ahead of them. So I gave it some gas. I got up to 55 on this sugar sand road. I mean, you know, you don't, you don't want to go too much faster right. than that as deep as it was. I mean, talking a deep sugar sand. So anyway, I got in front of them. And it happens again, like a couple miles later, they're, they're way behind us, you know, the first herd. So a second herd jumps out in front of me and I'm driving and I have to stomp on the brakes to keep from hitting them because I'm going 55 and they jump out and they start running at 45 right in front of me. So I stomped on the brake and I'm, I'm going, I can't believe this <laughs> talking to my buddy, you know? I said, two of these herds in one night, it's kind of weird, isn't it? And I look over, and in, in the clearing, and again, it was a thick patch on the left and a clearing on the right. So as we were going, we were going west on this dirt road. So on the south side, it was thick thick woods, and on the uh, north side of the road, it was cleared. Okay. And then in my headlights, I see these brown legs, these brown hairy legs. And that's all. I just got a glimpse of them real quick. And the weird thing, they looked odd. The legs looked weird. And I'm like, this doesn't look like beer, um, bear legs. I don't know what kind of legs these are. Because the, the legs were bent and then bent again at the, the foot. It was like a dog like a zigzag yeah kind of like a dog like a hawk yeah kind of like that not as not as drastic maybe but it definitely thick legs I mean, they were not skinny legs either and they were thick brown light brown colored hair on these legs and i just got a glimpse i said hey to my buddy i said hey i just saw some legs in that clearing over there running with us and I just saw it in my headlight, my headlights as we're going down the road. And uh, he didn't see it. So he says, well, maybe it's a bear. And I said, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I kind of doubt it, but maybe. I mean, I don't know what else it would be. Uh, looks like they're, whatever it is, it seems to be chasing these deer. Right? So, again, I... They didn't want to veer off. They didn't want to do anything. They're running at 45. So I said, okay, here we go again. I'm going to put some gas, you know, got back up to 55, left them in the dirt behind us. And it happens a third time. Okay. And we're talking a 10 mile stretch to our campground. This last road that we turned on, it's only like 10 miles. Okay. And so this is the third herd of deers, 10 or 15, 10 to 15 of them pop out in front of my, my truck. 
And this time I, I stopped on the brake, but I couldn't stop in time. And I hit this probably about a six month old. It was the, the spots were almost faded on this uh, deer. So it was a young one, but it was probably about six months because it was pretty, pretty heavy duty. It wasn't a, like a Bambi, you know, but it was, it was pretty big. But so anyway, I said, oh man, I got to stop, you know? So we stopped the truck and we get out and we're trying to discuss what we're, what we're going to do with this deer because it's dead. And I said, man, after talking a couple minutes, I said, you know, with this game warden checking us every year, I don't think it's wise for us to take this deer back to our hunt camp. This guy doesn't seem real friendly in the first place because mm. we're not locals. So I said to my buddy, I said, I think we should pitch it, a, you know, in the clearing and just leave it. So that's what we ended up doing. So it took two of us to pitch it into the, the clearing, get it over into the clearing off the road. I figured, well, whatever was chasing it's going to get it. You know, it's not going to go to waste. That bear that was chasing it, it's going to you know, take care of this, <laughs> you know. So I didn't worry about that. I just worried about the game warden giving us grief, you know. So I, I said, no, nah, it's not worth it to me, you know, to have him on us, you know. Because it still had spots, for one thing. So anyway, uh, we go to camp. We set up. The next morning, we're going out on our drive because that's what we did. The first morning, we'd, we'd go driving. And so we went that way. So on the way, we decided to stop and see if anything had gotten into this deer carcass. It wasn't anywhere to be found. It was gone, completely gone. No drag marks, no blood, no nothing. It was gone. And we did a search. We went out and we searched this clearing. And we knew it was the right spot because you could see where we had all the our footprints and everything in the sugar sand mm. on the road. You know, we knew it was where we were. So we knew where the deer should be, and it wasn't there anywhere. So we figured, well, and it had to be carried off because, you know, I mean, what else would it be? It, it, it wasn't dragged anywhere. It wasn't. Yeah, you would have seen drag marks. Um, and nothing ate it right there because you still would have seen blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it was completely gone. So that kind of freaked us out a little bit. But anyway, we explained that away and went on our way. But the next year, we, f we found out what that was. We found out that it's a Sasquatch uh, chasing those deer. And the reason we found out is because we had uh, one come out in the uh, clearing chasing two does, a Sasquatch. This was the story that I told. Yeah, this is the story that you told. It was a male Sasquatch. And uh, you could tell from the build of it that it was a male. You know, we didn't see any, you know, male body parts or anything. But you could tell the way it had a V-shape. It was built kind of like a basketball player. You know, it had that V-shape, muscular, long arms, really extremely long arms. Uh, about six and a half, seven feet tall. Dark brown. I, I at first thought it was a man in black chasing two deer. Because I saw it 250 yards away okay. at first. Came out now, was this, this was before you had the incident with the speaking, right? No, this was after. This was after. So you knew what yes. was out there already. No, you, you didn't no, think, no you didn't I repressed all that. I repressed all of that. I didn't okay. remember any of that. I didn't know what to do with it, Carrie. I, you know, I, I hear didn't you. know. Yeah. You know, I so I, I kept telling me it didn't happen. I told myself it didn't happen. It didn't happen until I forgot about it. Mm. So everything that happened was kind of like new to me. Everything that happened from from Nothing actually happened. day one mm. was all new to me because I, I, I buried it. As soon as it happened, I like explained it away and buried it. So what was the trigger for you? What was the sudden moment of realization that this actually did happen? Yeah, the, that's a good story. I mean, it, 
I got a smart TV about what eight years ago, first one, and I'm watching YouTube stuff and I'm watching you know all kinds of stuff that I've had interest in and one of them was Bigfoot so I get into the the Bigfoot Sasquatch uh, stories on YouTube and uh, first one of them was the uh, Sasquatch uh, Chronicles you know and of course they're not videos they're just audio Mm -hmm. so years later I saw a video of one out in Oregon uh, running in a field, and it, it was next to a campground, and he and it looked like two couples were filming this thing. And the one guy was saying, "Ah, oh, it's just a guy in black trying to scare us." And the other guy was saying, "That's a Sasquatch, man. That's a Sasquatch." And the other guy's saying, "No, that's just a guy in black." So they were having an argument between the two of them, and the women were just screaming on camera. They were just freaking out. Because this thing was running and, and crawling and running and crawling. and I've seen it. You've seen it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, that's the video that snapped me out of it. I started going, oh, man in black. Because that's what I called this thing in 95 was when I first saw it was a man in black. So that's when all the, the memories started flooding back. And uh, I'm going to have to leave. I'm going to have to leave at a really. Yeah crucial point i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> I'm sorry about that oh, hey. yeah i'm gonna catch up with you again kevin uh, okay i'm gonna, gonna listen to the rest of this but um, oh, i have i have other stuff too so yeah well I'm yeah well look, i'm sorry i'm gonna have to go but um it's been great talking to you and listening yeah same here we Paris. might go a little longer take some questions and then we'll just get him back yeah 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 okay all right, all right. well anyway have a good night yeah you too bye bye so, uh, yeah, after everything came flooding back, then I remembered everything. But as it was happening, I didn't remember anything from the 80s. You know. How long um, did it take for those that did it just all come back immediately? No, it actually took a, a couple weeks for it to all start coming back. Because then I started really thinking about it. That's what happened as I... I remembered the man in black 95 incident first. And then I started remembering, well, other things that happened to me. And then it just came all started just flooding back in eventually. I mean, what a brain twist, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know if I'm built different than, than other people or what the deal is, but I, uh, I just put it behind me. I put it in the back of my brain because I, I mean, I had nobody to talk to about it. And, you know, back in the eighties, nobody was doing shows like this. You know, I mean, we didn't have internet, you right. know, the younger viewers, they might not understand that but no internet, no family to talk to. Uh, my well, best friend that was there with me was so superstitious. He wouldn't talk about it. He told me flat out, don't talk about it. Because I tried to. I tried to talk to him. He yeah, says, well, he was the only one there, right? He was the only one there with me. And he told me late. flat out. He told me flat out. He says, Kevin, don't ever say anything about that again. Yeah, I mean, he, was, he wasn't he was kidding. He, he didn't want to talk about it. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's take some questions from the chat. I've got a few. While people are getting their questions ready, put them in caps for me, please, so I can pick them out easier. Appreciate it. Um, you, uh, this is what I'm hoping that someone else has experienced this. Here's you tell it, and we'll come out with theirs as well. You don't have well, to do it here. There's yeah. plenty of places to take your story here. You're not going to get ridiculed, you're not going to get laughed at. Um, uh, we've heard stranger things than this, as strange as this sounds. Uh, we've definitely heard stranger things, but I think it's happened to a lot more people. I think maybe some people listening. Uh, if you're listening to me right now, you're welcome here. You don't have to show your face. You don't have to tell your name. Just talk about what happened to you. Uh, it's just, to me, it's important. But that deer herding thing, just to get back to that real quick, I don't sure. want to take a lot of time with it, but that thing, uh, that event really 
sticks out in my mind almost as much as the um, the mind speaking thing because can you imagine the coordination it took for them to to force out three herds on a 10 mile stretch of road one right after the other i mean how many of them did it take to do that think about it you know I mean, the very the very first day that i scouted the area where i saw mine where i where i had my incident and they were in there before i ever got in there the first day i found a trail and it was just tracks five feet wide deer tracks I got, a, I got a tree climber. I could see my truck. That's how close I was to just the edge of the road. And counted 17 does, yardings, and spikes, all trotting. They weren't walking, but one after the other. Some together, next group would come, all coming through there. I think they were just going from the bedding area to, to feed somewhere. But, I mean, it's not unheard of for, you know, for that many deer to be together, uh, it, moving together. You know, to say they did it, um, maybe they did. Maybe they were hurting them. I mean, you did kind of get some some evidence of that, right, with the legs. Yeah. So, but, I mean. But I've never had anything like that before. Three separate herds. They had to be separate herds because I left the first herd in the, in the dust. You know, there's no way they could have caught me. Second herd in the dust. There's no way they could have caught me. The third third herd was a, was a totally separate herd again. So it's just amazing to me the coordination and how did they communicate and how did they know that I was coming? You know how did they know I was going to turn down that road? Because that it's a desolate road. Like I said, we most of the time the only car we saw was the game warden. That was it. Do you think they knew? Game wardens knew something. I think so. That's I think I think they did because that's why they were so interested in us and not yeah. having guns. I think that's why. Could have been exactly yeah, that. Yeah, because he searched he searched us all the time. Well, you've heard Mark Barton's story, and and he talks about the masters. And I see a question here from Greg Wisman. You haven't mentioned that, and uh, I don't know. Greg asks, uh, is there a master aligned with your group, all Sasquatch in general? I'm not sure how you would know that uh, unless you experience something similar to what no. Mark Harden had. No, um, I never, I never had anything like Mark did. And I've talked to Mark a lot. Him and I are actually pretty f close friends now. Uh, I'm PC gaming. He couldn't remember the name. Sorry about that. There's Bigfoot bud. So uh, did Kevin verbally speak back to them or through your head? What did you talk to him? You know, I, I think that I actually used my mouth. Okay. I mean, I was I was in such a. Uh, uh, I think I was in a controlled state from them. I really you had do. to be. You had to, you it, had to be. It felt very. I was so relaxed. You, you know? would not be human if you didn't freak the heck out. Yeah. I was yeah. seeing something like that. I mean, and they, it, I, it, I, I was yeah. almost in a daze as I was talking to them it was almost like surreal for you know no doubt the best way i could put it here's a question from josh so uh kevin do you what do you think these creatures are i think personally i think they've been here a long time may, possibly millions of years okay i mean i, I that's what human, i think human primate yeah i think they're their ancestors of ours. I definitely think that they're flesh and blood for sure. But I think to have the abilities that they have, they've been, they're more evolved. That's what I would say. Okay. And I don't think anybody, not too many people say that, but, and it sounds weird because they live in a, they live in the wild. So how can they be more evolved? Right. That's what a lot of people are going to say, Look, but uh, how can yeah. they mind speak too? You know, if you're going to live symbiotically with the earth, it has to be primitive because we don't. Right. We destroy everything we come in contact with. So yeah. maybe that is more evolved. Yeah. If you look at it in that sense. That's what um, I think. Miss Brenda K. Shelby, have you seen them since? No. Never went back. 
I never had any incident like that ever again. I'm not saying I have any, uh, you know, mental powers or anything. That's <laughs> that's for sure. I don't have any powers. Okay, <laughs> I want to get that straight with everybody. I, I've never had anything like that one ever again. Well, or before that, Miss Pamela Elmore wants to know if you have had any kind of mind speak experience before that, like with a human or a pet or anything else other than uh, these beings. No, no, never. Yeah. Now, I feel like I'm a pretty average Joe. I mean, I don't know why I was singled out. Uh, other than I think that they're not used to seeing people just hanging out, sleeping in, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I've had, no one else has come to me with anything like this except Mark Barton, but it was still a lot different. Yeah, um, we've heard, we've heard mind speak from people, but for what happened to you, uh, no, haven't heard that yet, but who's going to tell that? Right. Who's going to tell anybody they experienced that? I Mr. know. White House. I'm sorry. He just wanted to know if any of them had any smell. Did you smell anything off? No, no odors whatsoever. And I have a theory on that too. I think they have a, uh, a scent mechanism that, you know, almost like a skunk. That's just, I don't know. That seems to me like they have a, a way to project that odor. Gorillas do. It. So I'm not saying these things are like gorillas. To me, they're human primate, you know, human shaped feet, human shaped hands, hooded noses. You know, they don't have a divergent toe. You know, the very thing Jeff Meldrum got, uh, I, not in trouble, but they came down on pretty hard for saying the word human in there. And if they are, the DNA suggests they are. Uh, it's God's children. Why oh, you hear me saying that? Okay. Um, Derek Spinner, thank you for that, by the way. Uh, were they more ape-like or human-like? And the male and female look different? Question. Uh, you said the female looks scarier. Is that yeah. right? Well, definitely the mother did. Uh, the, the daughter, she was definitely not normal either. <laughs> Her eyes were just huge huge and no whites i mean it's just very odd very odd almost like the pictures you see of the little gray aliens you know the big oval shaped eyes uh the males looked like like just about like every other male that i've seen and uh drawings things like that so nothing really like, special there Patty, kind of. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, they looked more human, I'd say, than ape-like. The males, the females. That's another story. I don't even know where to categorize that. Well, I don't think there's any reason for us to assume that they, females, look like each other and males look like each other. I just, to me, it's no different than you and I, or anybody yeah. else. I know. agree. Bone structures are a little different. Soft features are obviously different. People are different heights, weights, body size. I mean, it's just there's there's no reason not to think that they're the same way. Uh, I agree. Just just from what we've seen and heard from eyewitnesses, you know, well these people are seeing different things. Uh, people want to try to type them and say this is what this type is and this is what this type is. Maybe that's true. Well, Maybe well, look, that's the case. Yeah. yeah, but look at the this. This was a family. And they looked so much different than each other, just in the family. Then they're all related. You know? Here, yeah, no doubt. So. Here's something interesting. Michael Howard says, hey, Carrie, a good man equals a good mate for the daughter. You think they were sizing you? <laughs> no. No, I never, I never got any feeling like that. <laughs> I think I've been a line, line crossed right there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just think they were they were curious. That's what I think. They were just curious. Well, it's all actually, it's all very incredible. The whole the whole thing that happened to you is again, I believe has happened to other people. I think what happened to me has happened to other people. It's just getting them to come forward with their story and hopefully that's what this will do 
is get people to come and talk about how they've been talked to in their mind. I talked to a lady that lives, I live in South Mississippi. I'm in West Texas right now, but I talked to a lady. She's 67 years old, Miss Betty, nice as can be, lives by herself. Um, very together mentally person says they talk to her that there are two Bigfoot around her talk to her in her head when she goes out she gives them food and different things and uh, and there's a dog man around that talks to her and doesn't but it doesn't talk the same way the Sasquatch do I can't get her to come on I've tried but she told me all these things on the phone and uh, says the dog man is like her protector uh, people they he, anybody wants to come up and try to mess around with her she said several people have tried to do that and they've protected her so a lot of contrasting uh yeah anecdotes i suppose from yeah. from one happening to the next some of them are so terrifying so uh aggressive and others really passive and you just kind of get everything in between so maybe maybe it's something different from place to place. We hear this. There's a gugway. There's a mountain giant. There's a skunk ape. You know, call them whatever you want. Uh, they're out there. That's all well, that really I, matters to me. Is that there? I out. had I had an aggressive young male out there too, though. I didn't tell you about that one. That was in '88, but I had an aggressive one that didn't like me. I don't think. Now, yeah. I don't know if he was the same one that was in that was in '95, because we're talking what, what was that eight years later, so he might have grown up, because the one I saw was about five feet tall, with brown hair too, but he had more of a wild look to him, and he was really ing aggressive to me. So he didn't think you were a good man, huh? No, he didn't like me much at all. That was in '88, um, on the hammock again. And it, this one crawled up the tree backwards. Oh, forget that. In front of me. I don't know how you go back. How you would have gone back after any of that. I just. Well, I, I, I just told myself that didn't just happen. Because it scrambled away, too. As soon as it, I saw it do that, it scrambled back around the tree on the other side and took off. And was gone. And I'm Sorry, like, nothing, I... nothing can move that fast. <laughs> that had to be my imagination. Right? I can't. I can't delude myself that much. Uh, I, that's why uh, I'm saying maybe I'm built different. I don't know. Could be, I could can't be explain it either. I just put it in the back of my head and said that didn't happen. That well, didn't man, happen. I, I'm really glad you came on and talked about these things. We got uh, oh, Arata imagery awareness. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for that, hey, Arata. Um, yeah, uh, kind of like to get you back. Um, we kind of kind of skipped around a little bit. I yeah, think uh, I think maybe you and I can can get together and and kind of put this thing together a little bit more linearly. I'm not I'm not the greatest storyteller, but uh, I've kind of learned how to a little bit uh, just doing this, just keeping everything formed and not not you know skipping around. It's it's hard to do when you've had a lot of things go on. Yeah. When you have things that explain others that happened after other things, then it's really hard to keep it linear. It but, is. Uh, but I definitely uh, I, want to get you back to. to I didn't, I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even go into what happened after. After you know the final straw. Well, let's do that real. Let's that. do that real quick, and then I definitely want to plan on getting you back, and then we'll just kind of go through the whole thing again, because this is just yeah. it, it, the whole thing is amazing. So, go ahead. Well, I think everybody's familiar. Well, if they're not, they can check out your. I think it's video or audio 26 and shutter for the uh, encounter with that male. But then after that, uh, I, I confronted my buddy and he didn't want to talk about it. So uh, that night I didn't sleep at all, but about three o'clock in the morning, I, we had uh, a visitor in camp and it was knocking on our vehicles and all kinds of stuff. And I, I actually got up a little bit and I'm looking around and I got a glimpse of something on two feet and then it came walking around our tent and all we had was our hunting knives and our bows in the tent. And I'm like, I don't know if this thing comes in, I'll, 
stick them with an arrow or I don't know what to do, you know. I, so anyway, it, it, it left after a few minutes of stomping around in the camp, but it wanted to, I think it wanted me to know it was there. Might have no even been, been the same one. Okay, so I had that, and then I had a tree peeking incident while we were target practicing the next day. We were target practicing with our bows, and I peek. I look over and I see something peeking out behind a tree. And I told my buddy, I said, "Don't look, but we got somebody looking at us or watching us." And uh, I got a good look at the face. And uh, we tried to sneak around on the side of our my truck, and then ran over there, and it was nothing there. But I got looking at the tree where that head was popping out. It was twelve feet, roughly. It was roughly, and that and after now that I know what I was looking at, that was the mother looking at us. Twelve believe feet. Believe it or not. That's believe just... it or believe it or not that that tree peaking, that was the mother checking us out, and I think she wanted me to see me see her, but as soon as my buddy turned his head just a little bit to look she ducked back behind the tree she didn't want him seeing him seeing her travis drum says kevin is an absolutely amazing storyteller one of the best i've ever heard i was not suggesting that you were not a good storyteller all i was all i was trying to say was when we come back we'll keep it more linear yeah and in a little bit so. not that it's hard to follow uh, you, you you tell it great because this is something that happened to you um but i think coming back I'll be able to, yeah. Maybe. Knowing, yeah, that sounds good. Knowing more about it. Yeah, if you want to wrap it up there, I mean, I I've got other things that I could definitely tell. Yes. No. Others. Well, let's get let's get you back. Danielle's got her show going right now, so you guys head on over to Hidden Existence and uh, and check that out. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Hidden Existence, go do so now. This uh, Wednesday, I think we'll have a researchers report at seven o'clock p.m. Central, and then Friday night we're gonna have. A whole new program for Brad and I for the late show. We're going to start doing the Bigfoot news. We're going to have uh, two really, really uh, husband and wife that have had that just their own odyssey around their house. So that's going to be this Friday coming up. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys then. Thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us. Everybody, thanks, everybody, for the super stickers. You guys are just incredible. Thanks, Gary. Y'all have a good evening.